Oh yeah, been a while since I've done a video, so I'm still working on this uh, restoration of a Betchdine Model B uh, from I think it was circa around 1930, 1932. So an often overlooked thing in pianos is the damper bodies. Now the damper bodies are the part of the action. This is the damper which rises and falls onto the strings and obviously mutes and damps the sound. You probably recognise if you've got a grand piano and it sits in there like that that's normally the bit you see in the keyboards over here and, you can, and this will rise and fall let me take that out and you can see this one it's falling but it's falling with resistance okay pivoting there on a pin and also this pivot here that's falling with resistance as well now that's one i haven't done so the one i have done you can see the difference there. It's falling with a lot more ease. The flange doesn't fall. It falls a little bit, but there we go. Okay. And then obviously that falls as well. That's got a lot more ease in there. Now the thing about these is if that's tight, like that one was, that can affect the friction. Because here, this piece of felt here, this is where the back, let me just get a key. <sighs> Here's the piano key for a grand piano. And essentially, that piece of felt on the damper body there, when you press the key, it lifts up the damper, you see? Just very simple, like that. Now, of course, it's pivoting here, where my finger's going. <coughs> and if it's, it's tight like this is, that's also going to affect the touch and the touch weight. Okay, so it's going to make the touch heavier, as well as also, possibly, it's not going to damp the strings very well, so you'll get a, a longer resonance of the note than you otherwise should do. Okay, so these parts are quite important to do. So there you go. So I can just show you how to do one. This is how what we do. Pin comes out. Take the pin out. There's the old pin. And take the pin out of the other one. Got to be careful not to push out the bushings. <clears throat> And I've got two size pins here, which are both being broached, filed to create um, a coarse pin to create a, like a, a mini file. And I have to file away a tiny little bit of the bushing cloth there. If you can see that. And I've got two size pins because these parts, some on some of them, there is a slight difference in pin size. That goes around through there too easy. So I've got to actually use the larger pin, so I'm using the other side of the brooch. When you're really unfortunate with these bushings, if they've been in the dry climate, which this piano definitely has not been, because if they've been in the dry climate, they'd be more, uh, they'd be loose. They wouldn't be so um, tight. It's obviously been in quite a, a humid place in its life. And that's why they're a bit sluggish and tight because the wood swells up around the pin and the bushings swell up as well. So that, by the way, I'm just putting the pin in my hair because it's just a tiny little bit of hair grease. Even though my hair's not that greasy, I do wash it regularly every day, whether it needs it or not. And we get the pin in there. It's quite a tight fit in there. And then you can see one, two, three. We tend to look for three to four to five swings. One, two, three, four. So it's nice. And the the flange is falling slightly and there's a good good fall there. Okay, and then we trim off sides and that's it. We've got a new pin in there. It's lovely and easy. And we just do the same thing again with the other part. That's it today. A little bit of centering. Cheers.